Praise is due to Allah alone. We praise Him, we seek Allah's guidance, and we seek Allah's help. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil deeds that we have committed. And we bear witness that there is no God but Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And we bear witness, and all power is Allah's, and we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and servant. O oh, worshippers, O oh, Muslims who are here today listening to this message, I advise myself and I advise you all to have taqwa, which is reverential consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal, to be mindful of Allah. As Allah says to the believers inside of his glorious Quran, O oh, you who believe, grant Allah his right and have consciousness of him, reverential consciousness of him, and do not die except as people who live their lives submitting themselves to him. Allah also says in his glorious Quran, O oh, you who believe, have reverential consciousness of Allah, and say words that hit the mark. Say good words that hit the mark, for Allah will therefore switch you. He will transform you, and he will forgive you of your sins and your wrongdoings, and whoever obeys Allah, and his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has truly won the true victory. Alhamdulillah, today we're blessed to gather together on the day that we know Yawm al-Qiyamah will be started. Today we are gathered and to receive a reminder. And what is the best reminders? That is the reminder of the glorious Quran where Allah azza wa jal gives us every single thing we can possibly use or have in our lives in order to strive forward and to be the best Muslims that we can possibly be. So today, we'd like to take a story from Surah Al-Kahf. And within that story, we want to dissect two characters. There will be a character who is a believer, and there's a character who is a disbeliever. And so this glorious story from Allah he gives us the perfect stories for us to draw all of our morals from and to put those into action into our lives. And he tells us the way that he wants us to respond simply based off of the words that he's given us inside of his Quran and the stories. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَثَثْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا Allah Ta'ala, He instructs the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to grant the people an example. An example of two men, one of whom Allah Azza wa Jal gave to abundant and magnificent gardens. And these gardens ran perpetually, and they were made of great vines, and Allah surrounded these beautiful gardens with date palm trees. And so Allah describes these two beautiful and illustrious gardens furthermore. And he said that they produced abundantly and everything about its fruit was juicy and, and, and extremely beautiful and luscious. And it didn't fail short in any of its produce. And Allah also caused from the two gardens to gush forth rivers or a river. And also for this man. Now this man who was receiving these two beautiful gardens, this is the disbelieving man. And he had treasures, Allah also says in his glorious Qur'an. فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا And so the disbelieving man, he turns to his friend who was the believer. And he tells him, I have much more than you. And I'm more stronger than you on the account of all of the glory that I have in worldly possessions and in the people who's behind me. I got a group. 
So Allah continues in His glorious Quran and He says, وَدَّخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ قَالَ مَا أَذُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا وَمَا أَذُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَئِن رُدِدْتُ إِلَى رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبَهُ And so the disbelieving man, he remarks to the believing friend, after Allah describes, he, he walked into his garden and he oppressed his own self through all of his gloatation and his glory of him thinking he is the one who's produced everything that he has. And so he says to his friend, man, I don't think any of this will ever cease to, to exist. And even if I was to return back to my Lord, I bet I will find even much more better than these gardens that I have with him. قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك من خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا. So look at how the Muslim responds, the believing man. He tries to calm him down and tell him, brother, don't you don't you think? What about the one, the God who created you? from dirt, like your father Adam alayhi salam. And then he allowed your parents to meet and you clung on as a clot to the wall of your mother. And Allah, he fashioned you and you became more and more body parts. And then you were born and you were an infant and you were taken care of. And then you walked on this earth and you grew up to be the man that you are today. Do you not think who is the one who is actually in control? As for me, he is Allah alone and I do not associate any partners with him. And you shouldn't associate yourself with Allah. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ and so the Muslim who has good character, he furthermore tries to remind his friend who is a disbelieving person. And through his reminder, he tells him that Allah is the one. It's better for you. It's much more better for you that when you enter your garden, that you say, MashaAllah, it's the way that Allah has created it. Look at what Allah has given me. And that there is no power nor might except through Allah. For I am only capable of having these illustrious gardens only because he is the one who's given it to me. His, the believing friend reminds him, the disbelieving brother, that he should say this. And if you see me, because I have less than you, because I don't have as many people behind me who can support me, that means I'm less than you. The Muslim brother, he reminds him furthermore. And he tells them, perhaps the way that you gloat and the way that you feel like you're so big and bad over all these things that you have, Allah is the one who can give me goodness from your garden. And he, the all-powerful, can cause a thunderbolt to come from the sky and to hit your land and to seize every single thing that you have. And it will become shifting sand. You couldn't even go on your land and step on it anymore. And he continues furthermore, the believing brother, and he reminds the disbelieving brother that what about even those beautiful uh, rivers or that beautiful river that Allah has put into your garden? He can cause all of that beautiful water to sink down so far in the earth that you wouldn't even be able to reach it and to benefit from it anymore. 
وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ So the man's, uh, the disbelieving brother, his garden and all of his, uh, everything that he owned was seized by Allah. فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا And so, as this event is going on, and everything that this man has ever owned is no longer there anymore, and he has seen his garden broken down, and no more water there, and he pleads, and he yells out, What have I done? How could I have associated myself with Allah? How could I have associated myself with with everything that Allah has given me. Woe to me. وَلَمْ تَكُلْ لَهُ فِئَتْوِي يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا And so Allah describes and He tells us in this glorious story that He's given us inside of the Qur'an to not become like this man. That this man had been given everything and there was nobody out of all the people who he had around him who supported him who could even help him out of his situation in returning his garden. Because it's Allah who is in control. It doesn't matter who you have in your life. It doesn't matter who is running whatever company. It doesn't matter who is in charge of whatever. It is because Allah Azza wa Jal gave them the ability to do whatever it is that they are doing. To have power and control over whatever it is that Allah has given them to do. Whether they be good and they do good with that thing or bad. And finishing, Allah says, هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقَّةِ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ عُقُبًا Yomun Qiyama. Yomun Qiyama, my dear brothers and sisters. Today we live in a realm where I can stretch my hands, I can bring them in, I can say words to you. But Yomun Qiyama is Allah's haq, it is Allah's right. And you and I will not be able to do anything. Allah is fully in control on Yomun Qiyama. None who are able to utter will be able to utter. No one who is able to move, just like you and I right now, will be able to move unless Allah allows it to happen. And Allah reminds us. So take heed to these stories, for He is the best and rewarding. But Allah is also the best in punishing. My dear brothers and sisters, it is upon you and I to be vigilant of these things. To take these beautiful stories from the glorious Qur'an and to extract as many fruits from the tree that Allah has blessed us with with this gl glorious Qur'an and to eat them and to benefit from them. It is important that we allow ourselves to know that Allah has sent a glorious message and it is up to us, you and I as Muslims, as those who submit themselves to get to know Allah's word. To find the morals in Allah's word. To know and to follow every single thing in this glorious Quran that we possibly can because we want to understand it. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So my dear brothers and sisters, when the glorious Quran is read, be quiet and listen to it, and perhaps you'll be advised. And perhaps Allah's mercy and His Rahmah will descend upon you when you think about what Allah has said in His Quran and why is it that He said that particular thing. Wal-Asr, Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah swears by the time of Asr that truly mankind is in a loss. Except for those who do good deeds 
and who encourage those to truth and to patience. My dear brothers and sisters, it is upon you and I to follow these examples in the Quran. When you learn them, employ them into your lives. Know that what Allah has given you from these stories, he wants you to act this way in life. Don't be like the boastful one. Be like the sensible one. Aqulu hadha al-qawl astaghfirullah al-azim al-kareem li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina min kulli dhanbin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim I have said my speech for this first khutbah. So seek the forgiveness of Allah, the grand and the majestic. I seek my forgiveness from Allah and on your guys' behalf and the behalf of the Muslims of the entire earth from every single sin that there is. So seek Allah's forgiveness in this time right now for he is the most forgiving, the most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما. We praise Allah, the the Lord of all worlds. He is our safety place for those who have God consciousness of him. And he has no animosity towards those except for those who practice oppression. And we believe that there is no God but Allah and that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger and servant. And we send praise and benedictions upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and the rightly guided companions all together. So before we end and we make salah, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us something that we can take. And we can take the beautiful words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and add them to what Allah has given us in his glorious Quran. And to be able to reflect on this story that we just spoke about today. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إذا نظر أحدكم إلى من فضل عليه في المال والخلق فلينظر إلى من هو أسفل منه. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says, if you or I am to see someone who has more than us, whether it be in worldly possessions, whether it be in their creation and their makeup, the way that Allah created them. Then it is upon you and I to look at those who have less than us in possessions and in creation. And just to give a few examples of what does that exactly mean. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has given us something that will always rear us right back in to being subservient, subservient to Allah Azza wa Jal. If I see someone who has more money than me. And I can sit back and, oh, I wish I had what he has. Why he gets to have that? Dang, I wish I had a big mansion or a nice car, this and that. Well, the thing is, I do have a car, alhamdulillah. And I do have a home. And I can easily look in the streets of different cities and see people who have less than me. And guess what it will make me? More fortunate. It will make me more grateful because at least I do have something. I can complain and I can say, man, I'm not as handsome as that brother or that sister. Or I'm not as tall. Or I wish I was a little bit shorter. Who really asks that, right? <laughs> or I wish I had this or I wish I had that. When it comes to the body, well, do you have all your body parts? Do you have all your phalanges on your hands and your feet? 
I don't like my nose. Do you have one? You can look at people and I bet you there are people who are way worse than you. As we say, more jacked up than you are. So it's extremely important, my dear brothers and sisters. Whenever we have a complaint, in order to settle ourselves and to obey Allah and his messenger and to ultimately achieve the greatest of victories, we must listen to Allah and his messenger and implement what they've told us. And the only way we're going to implement what they told us is by knowing what they told us. <clears throat> or going to those who know what they have told us. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabi al-umi wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin kama salayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-alamin innaka hamidun majid. اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها. Oh Allah, we seek your forgiveness and we seek your guidance, Ya Rab. And we ask you to forgive us of our sins and our wrongdoings. And we seek your forgiveness for the oppression that we have practiced within these lands and the oppression that we have put on others and the oppression of ourselves. Don't forget about not oppressing yourselves, my dear brothers and sisters. We ask Allah to guide us to the straight path to imbibe our hearts and make our hearts cling to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah raise His Qur'an and the Ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more so in our hearts and our desires to watch, to learn over Netflix, over Ruku, over all these other different programs. May Allah reaffirm us and orient us to him and his messenger alone, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna allaha amara bi thalathin wa naha an thalatha. Inna allaha ya'amaru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum yadhakkaroon. Allah Azza wa Jal commands towards justice, doing good, and generosity towards those who are close to you. Not only your family member, but just like all of these people who are here right next to you. And Allah forbids that which is shameful and blameworthy and oppressive, even if it's to yourself. He teaches you so that you may take heed. These stories, these words are not from me. They are from Allah Azza wa Jal. And from his beloved messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Cling your hearts to both 